With the engine running at operating temperature and the coolant circulating, use an infrared non-contact thermometer to check for uniform temperatures across the radiator core. A distinctly cooler section in the radiator core indicates a radiator tube blockage. Compare temperatures at the end tanks of the radiator. Check across the core where accessible and safe. Stay well away from the engine cooling fan. Check coolant flow through the heater core at the heater inlet and outlet hoses. The Gen 3 Cummins does not use a coolant shutoff valve in the heater system. Engine running, heater on, and fan blowing high. There should be a drop in temperature between the inlet and outlet tubes of the heater core. When the blower fan pulls air through the heater core, the heater core cools some. Reducing the heater fan speed should raise the outlet tube temperature closer to the inlet temperature. If the engine is running at normal operating temperature and coolant is not hot at the outlet side of the heater core, the heater core is clogged. Heat is directed into the cabin by the HVAC airflow blend doors. Once coolant flow is checked, let the engine cool down completely before removing the radiator cap. Always use hand protection and be sure the top of the radiator is cool. An infrared non-contact thermometer helps here. With the cap removed, check the engine coolant for signs of debris, scale, and engine oil. Engine oil is a sign of internal engine issues. Here, the coolant looks clean and I test it with my inexpensive hydrometer for specific gravity. This tester reads degrees of protection, which is lower than minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Coolant concentration also shows the boiling point with a radiator cap that seals properly. An antifreeze hydrometer is not an indicator of coolant condition. These Fleet Guard three-way test strips for commercial engine testing show the ethylene glycol or propylene glycol freeze point, molybdate level, and nitrite level. The test is run at the radiator filler neck with coolant at the full level and cold. These test strips are commonly used on larger Cummins engines with wet cylinder sleeves. The 5.9 liter 6BT 12 valve and ISB 5.9 liter and 6.7 liter parent bore engines have a one-piece block casting with cylinders cast into the block. Our engines do not use cylinder liners. Aluminum radiator solder seams can be damaged by too much nitrite. For our cast iron engine blocks, iron heads, and an aluminum radiator core, a hybrid organic acid technology, HOAT, antifreeze, like Valvoline Xerex G05, or a Fleet Guard recommended coolant, works best. Here, I test the used ethylene glycol antifreeze. Nitrite level is good. Molib date reads normal range, and freeze point protection is 60% range. I use antifreeze concentrate mixed with distilled water only. No well water or city tap water has entered this system since new. I have an older stamp pressure tester and a newer OTC 6977 pressure test kit. Here I pressurize the system to 16 psi, never over 20 psi, with the OTC tool. A quality tester that seals well should hold the system pressure steady for 20 to 30 minutes. This test held 16 plus PSI, indicating no leaks or sealing issues. I watched the water pump, radiator tanks, hoses, and clamp ends during this test. The system is secure, hoses remain firm, no cracks, and in good condition. The stamp kit from the early 80s has a radiator cap adapter sleeve. Using the newer OTC 6977 pump with the adapter, the cap would not hold its 16 PSI rating. I tested several times at 16 PSI. The pressure drops to 5 to 6 PSI and held there. Holding there and not dropping to zero indicates a balance spring issue and time for a new radiator cap. This defective cap accounted for the recovery tank coolant level variations. Cap pressure should be tested routinely. A 16 PSI system with a 5 PSI cap has a much lower boiling point than the advertised coolant protection. Coolant boiling point is always listed for a specified PSI cap pressure and antifreeze coolant concentration. This new aftermarket cap tests OK and will work until the next system service or water pump replacement. The engine and cooling system are allowed to cool completely before loosening the radiator drain petcock. For a threaded stem plug, RAM models built during 2003 to 2005, I highly recommend not unthreading the plug stem completely. The threads are plastic and act like it. 
Once removed, the plug is difficult and often impossible to start back into the radiator drain seat threads. I drain the system in two cycles. This takes more time than a dealership or most shops will allot. The engine and cooling system must cool down completely between each draining. It is also necessary to drain the coolant recovery tank, which could be difficult. I make this easier by siphoning the old coolant with either an evacuator or this contemporary cooling system refill tool. The tool uses the cooling system as a vacuum source. When the vacuum reaches 18 to 20 inch height within the cooling system, the hose with strainer can be placed in the overflow tank. Releasing the valve applies vacuum to the siphon hose and draws the coolant out of the overflow tank. The drain system gets filled with distilled water and two bottles of Rislone flushing solution to handle the large cooling system capacity. Radiator cap in place, start the truck. To be clear, there is no shutoff valve on the 05 Ram Cummins truck's heater core. Hot coolant circulates through the core, whether the heat is turned on or off. You can turn on the heater if you need heat. At thermostat opening temperature, 195 degrees Fahrenheit, Coolant fully circulates through the system. The truck is driven an additional 15 minutes at cruise speed to flush the system. Back at the shop and cooled down, I drain and check the flush water with a hydrometer. It does not show any antifreeze protection, indicating that most of the original coolant is gone. Many would stop here and refill the system with fresh coolant. I can tell by the coloration that there is still some old coolant present. I refill the system with pure distilled water and drive the truck for 15 minutes after a warm-up. This is the third and final draining. Note that the distilled water runs clear with the truck parked on a downward slope to fully drain the engine. Rislone Hyper Cool Cleaner and Super Flush is not harmful to the cooling system or water pump. The cooling system is now ready for a fresh refill with coolant. The drain Petcock's plastic threads were stripped. This stem should not be cinched with pliers. Even with snug finger tightening, the threads eventually strip. As a Mopar replacement drain Petcock assembly, Use is limited to 2003 to 2005 Ram trucks and the Viper through 2017. For Mopar, the part number is 520290870AA. Limited use usually leads to discontinued parts. For expediency, I looked further at the Napa Online National website. Searching at Napa turned up an illustration for part number NOE. 6051278. This is a new original equipment GM part. I bought the one drain petcock at our local Napa store and ordered two spares. Not to worry, if you have a 2003 to 05 Ram with this threaded stem drain petcock, the part is OE for GM back to 1987 plus Ford and Toyota. Mopar used this petcock briefly. It is apparent why. The new kit comes with a plastic stem and plastic threaded seat. The easiest method for removing the old seat is a needle nose pliers. Slide the pliers deeply enough to capture one lock tab, then bend that flange inward. Tilt the piece to release the other tab. Use care not to scratch the ring seat where the rubber gasket seats and seals. Fortunately, despite this marginal design, the item is serviceable. $6.79 at Napa is a lot cheaper than replacing the whole radiator. Note the shoulder on the threaded stem. I start two threads and keep the lock tab flanges just below the stem shoulder. This allows the flanges to squeeze inward for inserting the lock tabs. Since the stem threads are already started, there is no risk of cross-threading the stem after the threaded seat snaps into place. There are notches in the drain seat that align with these tabs. I push the stem and seat into position together, making sure both flange tabs snap into place. Once in place, the stem and seat fit squarely and snugly. This is a stem with the seat snapped in place and the few threads caught. Turning the stem inward clockwise will spread the flanges onto the stem shoulder. This secures the threaded seat in the radiator. If you only screw the stem out this far to drain the radiator, you will avoid trouble. The coolant will drain straight down and well. 
do not unscrew the stem all the way. You may not get the stem threaded back in place. Have a stem and seat kit on hand before draining the radiator. Clear distilled water is drained and the drain petcock is snug and leak free. Since the system list is 29.5 quart capacity, I will use 16 quarts, 4 full gallons of concentrated coolant. By using concentrate, I can adjust the coolant concentration for more than 50%. I run 60% concentration. The 6040 concentration with Xerox G05 lowers the freeze protection to minus 62 degrees Fahrenheit and raises the boiling point to 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Boiling point is with a 16 PSI pressure cap that holds. By first pouring the four gallons of concentrated Xerox G05 coolant into an empty radiator and fully drained system, all of the coolant ends up in the cooling system. After adding two bottles of Rislone Hypercool Super Coolant, I fill the rest of the way with distilled water. Using Xerox G05 Concentrate enables boosting the percentage of antifreeze coolant to as much as 70% antifreeze protection. G05 is an HOAT formulation recommended for use in diesel engines and aluminum radiators. Service life rating is 5 years, 150,000 miles. For the coolant recovery tank, I mix 1 quart of coolant with 1 quart of distilled water. This way, the system has extra antifreeze toward the 60% concentration level. After running the engine for 10 miles and a cool down, coolant siphons into the radiator from the recovery tank. I fill the recovery tank again with another 50-50 mix. At that point, the 30 quart system has 18 quarts of concentrate and approximately 12 quarts of pure distilled water. When considering a vacuum refill siphon kit, Take hose collapsing into account. This is what the long upper radiator hose on a Ram Cummins engine looks like with 20 inch height vacuum in the cooling system. You can see why I was reticent about using this method with older hoses. The hose did restore to proper shape when I released the vacuum and this method worked fine when the hoses were newer. Pouring coolant mix into the radiator and recovery tank with a funnel is not a hardship. I have used Rislon products since the 1960s, especially on high mileage vehicles, like our Jeep Cherokee that has over 191,000 miles now. An excellent product for high mileage gasoline and diesel engines is Rislon Engine Treatment, which is a conditioner and cleaner. This modern product is much like the product we relied on years ago. The high mileage engine treatment reduces friction and wear quiets noisy lifters and valves can remove and prevent sludge and keeps the engine clean traditional wrist loan users know what this can do for a high mileage engine in addition to the easy pour system this product really works i've used it in our dodge ram 5.9 liter cummins engine keeping injectors clean and contributing to a smoother idle and better performance overall